are listening to the Metal Command Podcast. Greetings, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Metal Command Podcast. Tony here with you. And today I am bringing you an interview with myself and Rowan Grappau of Masterplan, who, of course, owns Grappau Studios in Slovakia and really doing a great job mixing and recording with younger bands and really helping them get their start, uh, which I think is great. And, and for those of you that obviously know, he played in Halloween for a number of years. So I uh, played on the Pink Bubbles album all the way through The Dark Ride. Now, let me tell you this. I've known Roland for 25 years. Uh, back when he was in Halloween, when I was running their website and I first had started doing that, he was actually in the band back then. And I got to know him pretty well along with the rest of the guys in the band. Now, when he was subsequently fired along with Uli Kush, we lost contact for a little while. Uli, I, I really haven't talked to uh, in quite some time. In fact, I haven't really reconnected with him at all since he was out of Halloween. So I really lost contact with him. Uh, with Roland, because he was in Master Plan and we had already known each other, anytime AFM had some press going on, just like any other band I would have on my radio show that had an album out and the album was significant, uh, I would definitely have Roland on the show and we'd talk about the record and what was going on in that band. So obviously there's a history here. And one of the things in this interview, I really don't focus on much on the Halloween thing because, you know, that's been said and done for 20 years. It's been beaten to death. It's like beating a dead horse. It's 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 gotten old, in my opinion. And it's like every interview that I see with Roland. I mean, there's all of the same questions that that people are asking him, that the same questions they have been asking this guy for 20 years now, ever since he's been out of the band. And, and at th this point. For me, there's no point in talking about it because I was around when all that happened. I know how everything went down and, you know, it's been talked about for so long. So to me, it's gotten pretty old and I've almost, in some sense, I've gotten sick of it. Every time I go online to see Interview with Roland and it pops up on YouTube or someplace else, the same Halloween questions every single time. So I don't focus on that. What I focus on is something that he's doing that I think is very important. And that is this. He is helping young bands get their start, mixing albums, helping guys record, and he's doing that in a studio. And that that is actually his full-time gig, and it's something he's very happy doing, sitting at home, being able to be with his wife, be with his dog, and he gets to make create music with other people. Uh, I think he's done a great job with bands like Lords Black and some other bands that he's mixed and, and done some work for. And I think that his role right now in the scene in doing what he's doing with younger bands, which is something he loves doing, I think is a very important one. And I think it's one that really people need to pay attention to. Uh, he's bringing certain bands to light that I've never heard of, but it's like with the station and, and with, with the show and the podcast and everything, I get, I'll get albums from bands and I look and saw that he mixed it. And some of these bands are actually very, very good. So I we focus a lot on his studio. So if you're going into this interview expecting a bunch of Halloween questions, I can flat out tell you we re really don't get into that. I think again, I think it's almost ridiculous at this point where when people ask him the same tired old questions about Halloween time and time again. Uh, do we talk about them a little bit? Yes, but we focus more on on the band master plan, the upcoming album they have coming out. Uh, that will be out at some point and we focus a lot on his studio work because i can tell you back when i knew him and when i was around him a lot more uh, he did talk a lot about being a you know doing production and mixing and stuff like that and it's really cool to see how he has found his calling in doing that so uh and, and it's crazy because knowing this guy for as long as i have and, and have you know even though we've had sporadic contact uh, he's definitely changed a lot as a person compared to what he was back in the old days. But anyhow, we focus more in the studio and the stuff that he's recording. And one last thing before I get into this interview, Rowan Grappau can produce some killer thr kick-ass thrash metal bands and really mix a lot of these albums and make them sound good. So if you were in a thrash band, I can flat out tell you if you need someone to really help you get your start, this is the guy to hire because I think that he's a kind of diamond in the rough that nobody pays attention to, but he always gets like power metal bands sending him stuff because again, he's his, he's most well known as being in a power metal band, but believe it or not, 
Roland is a huge fan of the Bay Area thrash scene and a lot of the thrash metal bands. And I think if a band that's actually pretty good gives him a shot at mixing their album, I think it would turn out really well. So with that being said, here is the interview with myself and Roland Grappau of Master Plan. So Roland, thanks for coming on my show again. Uh, it's It's been quite a while uh, since I've talked to you, but I'm really excited for what you have going on with uh, Master Plan. And you, know, you have some new uh, Master Plan reissues that have come out on vinyl. And let's talk about that to start the interview off. Talk about some of these reissues that you have uh, coming yeah. out. Yeah, the main reason is uh, uh, because we are 20 years in January, or the release of the first album came out in January 20 years ago. And uh, I spoke with AFM Records. Maybe it's cool to make something special for the fans, you know. And uh, they said, yeah, we wanted to plan anyway to make... Um, yeah, most of the albums like uh, re-releases on vinyls. Uh, the first one is planned even with all the old bonus tracks from Japan and Europe. So it will be double album even. And uh, then I said, yeah, so what do you think if I maybe um, I was working many years, I had lying the old DVD, which we recorded 2003 um, in Gassenberg as a support from uh, Hammerfall and uh we never released it and it was professional recording uh eight cameras and um we just played 50 minutes because of support and but we had also a lot of uh, private camera uh, recordings um like i call it bonus you know video and it's behind the scenes so it's like backstage and uh tour bus and uh, some funny moments uh, we showed um, the crew, how they're building up the stage and everything. So it was also 50 minutes. And I offered this to AFM and they said, it's a great, great idea. And uh, beginning of this year, I was transferring these old tapes to, to, you know, it was professional cassettes, which I can't use at home. And I paid some money for it. And now I have it in my computer and um, I was cutting the you know, some wrong parts out or better parts from the different cameras, and my Pro Tools system, which is normally not made for this. And uh, I mixed it already, the audio tracks, and fixed it because many problems were in the drum recording, one kick drum was missing, and, and, and same what we had in Halloween with the High Life recordings. They forgot one kick drum. <laughs> it's always like that. You know, you pay a lot of money and then they forgot it, <laughs> forgetting something. And this will come out uh, as a bonus, uh, this DVD as well. So this is the plan for our 20th anniversary. All right, man. So I, I think that's really cool, you know, putting this stuff out on vinyl. I always wondered if that would ever happen, you know, for a lot of your material, because, uh, you know, originally it was never released on that. And talk about that specifically have, you know, a lot of people, are you doing the mastering for the records? Are you remastering them yourselves or is somebody else doing it? And, you know, how no, is that I, going? I'm, I decided, uh, they asked me if they should make something like a remix or remastering. I said, no, I like the sound like it is. And I don't want to, you know, I'm not a big fan of this remastering stuff from old albums, which I always liked and loved. I never, as a young fan, I would say, you know, when I heard Grand Fang, you know, I like them so much, or like Deep Purple or something. I don't want to have a remaster, you know, some, some different sound of the, of my original kind of memories. I like mm -hmm. the sound like it was. I, I don't, I'm not missing anything, you know. For me, it's yeah. something... Mixing mastering is a, is a heat of the moment. If something is really bad mixed and mastered, then of course it has a right to, to remaster or remix it. Mm -hmm. But I was always happy with the result, what we had it, how we, how we did it, you know? Yeah. Well, I, so here's something I'm going to tell you about. I want to say something to you and I want you to see, I want you to think to yourself or I want you to give me a reaction to this. So, I've known you a very long time, you know, obviously from way back in the Halloween days, back in the early days. And, you know, obviously I first knew you as Roland Grappau, the guitar player of Halloween. And then obviously you went to master plan, but now it's interesting. I, I, you fast forward to today. I almost in some sense, forget that you, all, that you play guitar. I, I know you as Roland Grappau, the producer, because I've now 
on my show, I'm, I'm listening to some of these bands that you've started to re started to produce. And so now I'm thinking, I, I know you as a producer, probably more than anything. And I, I always think that people forget and, and, and it gets overshadowed a lot. People still to this day, go back. Oh my God, Roland from Halloween. But I, I feel that people don't really recognize your skill as a record producer and sound guy. And that's how I, I see you now. And how do you see yourself these days? You know, because you're doing, you're making a lot of pretty good records and a, with a lot of really young unknown bands. And, you know, how do you look at yourself today uh, as compared to say, you know, maybe 20 years ago? Uh, yeah. So I started with this, uh, my own studio recording uh, younger bands and mixing. I think now I'm more, more uh, specialized on the mixing process and mastering because, um, you know, it's, it takes a lot of energy to, to have uh, bands always in the studio recording them. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, now I decided I'm, I'm more into mixing mastering, you know, and uh, yeah, I just realized sometimes I say, said to my wife, man, I'm not really playing guitar much anymore. And, uh, I'm always happy when somebody asks me for solo part on their albums or something. And uh, I do it like, let's say, three, four times a year that people ask me for a solo part, special, a special guest or something. Yeah. And um, then I realized, yeah, maybe I should re rehearse a bit more because many m months I don't touch even my guitar, you know, and especially since I started recording the, these bands, which is already 14, 2007 I started. So mm -hmm. 14, 15 years. So um, I just decided because I had this gig last weekend in uh, Finland and I played, uh, I think, seven, eight songs and only one master plan. So the other seven were old Halloween songs, which I wrote. Mm -hmm. And I played after 22 years, uh, first time live. I mean, I did it in a studio once, as you know, the Pump Kings album. But live, I never played... Um, the dark ride for 22 years and it was a big challenge for me to learn this this song again and it's not one of the easiest because of the solo parts and uh, it was a lot of fun and i just decided i need to play more guitar and uh now i'm in a position that we do the new album finalizing uh, master plan so i will play more guitar but also i want to to do this kind of uh, live events more Right. Uh, I, have I have already invitation uh, for April next year in Brazil again to do the same what I did three years ago, uh, again with some uh, great musicians from Sao Paulo and um, or Brazil, playing Halloween songs which I wrote and maybe some some of the other guys which I liked, you know, mm -hmm. just to make these people happy, uh, which are missing this part of the band, you know, my my songs, and. Uh, of course, it's a challenge because um, maybe I play also some songs of Uli, like they were also very difficult, like Revelation or Push sure. or all this kind of stuff. And I think that uh, that would be fine for me, you know. And 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 you know, I have more plans. We can maybe talk later about it. What I want to do in my studio. Gotcha. Yeah, I just think you know you're putting out, you're producing these really good records from a lot of these bands, and they come across to me you know, by people that are either promoting those bands or labels or whatnot. And I just hear these records sound really good. They sound really polished. And, you know, I, I just, now I, I'm in this mode where I just know you as a producer. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's not. Uh, what I'm saying is that I think people, I don't think people recognize you as much for that as they should. That's more where yeah. I'm coming from. I think um, that's the kind of thing I'm not prom prom pro promoting so much, you know. It's like uh, as long as people come to me and I have some work, you know, I don't want to get to this big, big high level, then I have to quit guitar forever, you know, because then it's a... Uh, mm -hmm. I don't have... This is really time-consuming mixing. Um, I'm not the fastest guy on the planet, so I, I think I mix one album if I take really care about it, like three weeks. So that means... If I have a work for one band, I think this whole month I'm I'm done, you know. I keep one week maybe for if they have something to change or if they're not happy with something. Right. Sometimes I even mix longer, you know. If I have trouble with a the band, they don't like the style, I, I offer something different. I want to make people happy with my work. And that's that's the main key. And I'm happy that I'm still working in the music industry, somehow in a different part. And uh, not only as a guitar player or uh, also singer if you call it a little bit mm -hmm. 
and songwriter. So everything was uh, more into the mixing guy, which it's, it's, I really love this kind of, um, yeah. how you say, draw, jo- it's not a job for me. It's, it's really more like a hobby, you know, which uh, makes me happy when bands are thinking, wow, you know, I'm always happy when the album I mix sounds better than the stuff they had before and so on. They get a better push yeah. or better position in the, in the music industry. Well, I think you're in a, in a unique position because you are working with a lot of younger bands that really are not that experienced. And you've, you obviously have a lot of friends as far as music production guys where you've, you know, for years that you've learned from and it's, it, you know, most, most guys that are really doing that for a living, they're doing all these high profile bands. I mean, if, if you really go and look at it, but you're doing bands that a lot of people may not have heard or heard of. And mm-hmm. I think that's really important because these people are the future of the metal scene. When you really think about it, you know, all of us, nobody's really getting younger these days. And these bands are the future of the metal scene. And how do you, do you feel that doing what you are doing is helping these bands along, you know, and to really help the future of the scene, because there aren't a lot of guys like you doing what you are doing, especially for a lot of bands that aren't that experienced. I think it's sometimes, uh, for me, even easier to work with younger musicians, which uh, don't have so much experience in a way of working with different producers or different mixing guys, you know, they can choose like, uh, if they have like a background of 10 albums or something, of course, yeah, and see, okay, this was great, this was not, and then they can say, let's try Roland Grab or whatever, you know, and then let's see how he works. It's always like uh, something easier instead of mixing one band which is 50 years on the market you know or mm-hmm. it's like oh, like let's say Judas Priest or some old old classic like the purple or whatever i think it's really difficult with these old um uh, wise and whatever how you say like like stars you know mm-hmm. everybody in that band has different opinions and then especially if you say like the purple i mean Roger Glover is a producer but mm-hmm. still they're working with other producers, you know, but imagine this guy was sitting next to me. I would feel like a little boy, you know, right. like, uh, this guy was uh, working with on, on, or with this band on my favorite albums, you know, like machine head and all this, you know, and he worked also as a producer in rainbow as, as far as I remember. And, 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 but it's just a, uh, you know, example. And, uh, and also, especially these, um, most famous bands are from England, you know, or America. And uh, so I never had the chance to work uh, with really like a big band so far. Um, not that I, I have fear about it, but it's definitely much more complicated, I guess, than these younger bands, which sure. are happy when, uh, when I make all my effort and all my help to put into this kind of project, you know. Well, I, you've really developed it seems like you've developed a relationship with Lords of Black. It seems to be, you know, every guy that produces or mixes mixes a record has a couple bands that they're just known to work with. You just work well with. And Lords of Black seems to be that band where you're always producing and doing stuff and mixing their albums. And it's almost become, you've become like, it's almost like you're part of the band in a sense because you're doing their records, but you seem to have a very good relationship with those guys. And how did that develop? And, what has kept you working with them? Well, uh, I didn't, don't remember how it started. I think Tony is a guitar, the guitar player of uh, Lots of Black, came to my studio. I think it was 2009 or eight, mm-hmm. and uh, he just uh, wanted to record the dr- drums for his solo work, and he asked Mike Tirana. Mike Tirana, I think, was mentioning my studio because at that time he was a band member still. And uh, so he came and he we, we, we went a little bit like uh, closer together. You know, we, we didn't know each other so much before. But since then, we're friends. And uh, we always kept contact. He always asked me for advices about contracts and about singers. You know, he has the same situation with uh, Ronnie Romero, like like I had with Jorn, you know. So Ronnie's singing in every other band now, and uh, so um, I was happy to be be part in the beginning. And then he asked me for his former band, uh, Saratoga. I think I mixed one album or two. I don't remember. See, I have so many bands I did. 
but definitely uh, I like this band as well, Saratoga. And uh, but I remember they were singing in Spanish, and Tony was guitar player at that time, and then he left and started a new band, which was Lords of Black. And then I was like hearing this new singer and Ronnie, and uh, so wow, that's pretty cool being part of it. Um, yeah, my mixing skills were were not so far at that time. Uh, like I think it's already ten years ago or, or nine years ago, the first album. But then every album I was getting better and better, and uh, and now I'm pretty happy. I told him once um, some months ago we talked, and I said I'm I'm really happy to be part of this kind of band, you know, not just as a mixing producer guy, like a friend. Yeah, and. And also Ronnie uh, Romero is releasing now his, or did, or, or, I think he did already, some days ago, his new solo album called something like, uh, I think it's all cover songs. And uh, so he has one master plan song, I think it's Kind Hearted Light. And I played all guitars on it. So he asked me and I played the solo part. And uh, he also asked me maybe his next normal studio album to mix it. So, so you see, this all makes me really happy when this guy, I mean, he's singing now for Schenker for, you know, whatever he's singing. He's yeah. in so many famous bands. And uh, so I'm glad he likes my sound. And he was happy that I helped him in Lords of Black to have always a good vocal sound, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and as I've said, you, you've put out some really good you've helped put out some really good sounding records these bands you know a lot of them nobody's heard of you know they're they're very un, they're unknown bands but they're very talented but you've really brought out a lot of what a lot of these people are doing and yeah i, I think that if they were to go to produce it themselves this music wouldn't come alive the way that it has with you mixing it and really helping it become <clears throat> it really helping it come alive in a sense because uh, you, you know, most guys that have your skill set usually are not working with bands like that. But now that you are, I think it's great that you're bringing a lot of these newer, younger bands to light because the metal scene really needs that right now. In my opinion, you know, with all the stuff that I get and all of the stuff that gets sent to me on a weekly basis, you know, there's a lot of very poorly produced records even stuff on yeah, some yeah. labels is the, the production sucks i mean i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit here and name which band it which bands that it that this applies to but mm -hmm. there are records released by labels that do not sound very good at all and yeah it, it gets it becomes disappointing but you yeah. on the other hand and some of these bands are well known but you on the other hand are getting these younger bands they are sounding great and i just i just think that what where you are in the scene at this point doing what you're doing i think it's great because i think it helps the future of the metal scene you know whereas a lot of the a lot of the older guys a lot of us that have been around a long time you know we're, obviously we're not going to be around forever so it needs to continue you know that's kind of yeah. how i see it it's also funny that uh, you know sometimes you work with one band let's say 10 years ago and they maybe were not 100% happy with the mix or something because they wanted to sound like, let's say, Metallica or something, you know? Yeah. But there was no budget, of course, and I just spent this certain time of, uh, with my experience at that time. But in my position, I could I can say that uh, I learned every six months something new. Mm -hmm. And every time I try to bring it into the next band, you know, and to the next band. And certainly you get your own style more and more and uh so i think i'm getting more and more self-secure about everything and uh so especially now with my own band master plan um i'm looking forward to mix it you know i'm, I'm really hungry now for it because the last one is a long yeah. time ago okay i made pumpkins which i think is four or five years ago or six and every time I tried something drastic different, but now I get more and more secure that I'm not overdoing it so much on some stuff or, you know, better guitar sound, which is always my dream to get, uh, you know, get it more into the, you know, when I, when I hear other mixes, I think, oh my God, I would do this much better, you know, something like that I'm saying many times. And, uh, you know, you get always these magazines uh, in Germany which they sent me here to still like metal hammer rock hard and all this and there's always some cd inside with the newest releases one song of each band whatever and i'm checking it out mostly and it's like, oh my god this is horrible you know 
it's, yeah. it's far away from my standard you know it's like not that i'm b much better than every other famous producer but i'm somewhere in a nice middle range uh, you know which um some people maybe don't like it but i think you should do what you like not and people should come to me when they hear something and say okay i like what he's doing and that's the key you know it's not not to come to me because i'm roland the ex guy from halloween or master plan you know and um so they should listen to the albums i'm mixing and then decide okay basically i like all this bands what he did and then give him a chance you know this kind of yeah and um, that's how i like to work you know well that's why i also so far i'm always say saying it sometimes maybe i should contact some labels like nuclear blast or something and offer my help you know but uh, then you get the bigger bands and that's that's uh, makes me in, a, in a, putting in the trap you know more pressure and everything because you don't want to fuck up these names which are famous already you know well put it this way people are already are, people already fuck them up in in some sense <laughs> imagine so that cd that you're talking about in the magazine right you talk yeah. about you know you get a compilation thing you know, with like 10, yeah. 12 songs on it. Now, I want you to take that, think about that for a minute, okay? Imagine getting like 10 of those every week, the equivalent of yeah. that. That is what yeah. I get in my email box. And I can tell you that I deal with a lot of, you know, pretty big labels. And I'll be mm. honest with you, man. Not, I'd say most, in most cases, the production and the sound on a lot with a lot of bands is fine, but then you'll get some groups that are in there where they produce, they get a record produced and mixed. And it sounds, in my opinion, sounds terrible. So you are not the only person thinking that there are other people that think the same thing. And I've been doing this for almost 25 years. I can tell you that <laughs> I can tell you that a, there, there was, there was one band. I can't remember who it was. I'm not going to name them, but I almost mm -hmm. felt like I could mix the record better than them. And I don't mix albums, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, and that's, and, and the thing is it ruined a rec It ruined the record pretty much. The songs weren't bad, but the, you know, a really horrible mix can ruin an album. So you are not, you are somebody that I could see stepping into a role, working with bigger bands. I think you could do it easily. Uh, it's a matter yeah. of, do you want to do it? Because the, definitely the quality of the mixes and the stuff that you've done. I remember, uh, what was that check band? I think it was X-Core, if I remember correctly. X-Core, yeah. X -Core, yeah, yeah. That, thing, that album sounded really good. And that was like right when you were really starting out. Was that 2008? I think well, the first album? Well, the first or second band I made, yeah. Correct. 2000, 2008, yeah. So what, what, and, what, where I'm going with this, so what I'm saying is that I think you could step into that role if you really wanted to. Yeah. But it's a matter of wanting to do so because I think you can make these albums sound sound really good for a lot of labels. But at the same time, I think to myself, you're still in this role with these younger bands, and I think I almost think that's more important in a mm -hmm. sense, you know. So um, I think you're good enough to to do to do stuff for like Nuclear Blast and you know these other record labels and stuff. But yeah, um, for sure, for sure. I mean, I mean. I, I work with uh, power metal, I work with trash metal, I work with everything. And I prefer, of course, the easiest mixes are is just, you know, when you don't have keyboards and many choirs, of course. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's more guitar oriented, you know, and which is more open. You can make the guitars louder, the bass more brutal, and, and, and. Mm -hmm. And I, I prefer this. But in the moment, I get a lot of keyboard bands. My God, I said, w w why do they think I'm the right guy for that? You know? And uh, master plan has keyboards, but we're not putting them so loud, you know, for right. my tape, I put them in the right spot that you hear them and then if you're feeling them and, uh, you know, I like keyboards, but yeah, but some, for some of these bands call themselves symphonic metal or something. And then they want this brutal loud orchestration and the drums are really small. And I don't like that. I want the, the fundamentals for me, drums, bass and guitars, and then the rest is uh, making the colors for me, you know? Right. Well, and this goes back to what I was saying before. So yeah. I think you, I think thrash metal bands, I think you get overlooked. I think you would make, and you have made some pretty, pretty good thrash metal stuff. I think you would do yeah. great at that. The problem is people associate you so much with Halloween that the symphonic exactly. metal exactly. bands come to you. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm saying you're getting a lot more of that, but I could see you easily like what? Well, 
uh, let me give you an example. I'm just going to throw a band out there. Let's, I could see like Testament or Exodus or somebody, so a band like that, that sounds like that coming to you. And I could see you making the album sound great, you know, but, yeah. the, but the problem is you, you have this stereo. It's almost like, here's what it reminds me of. It's kind of like what they call typecasting. Like the guy that mm-hmm. played Luke Skywalker was always known for that. So he had a hard time finding a role doing yeah. anything else. And yeah. to me, I, I like I said, and I'm not saying the Halloween thing for you being a, being in that band, it was bad. I'm saying that people still hold on to that and they, they don't realize that you're capable of other stuff. And, and, and it's sort of stuck with you, whether you, whether you want it to or not, you know, and in yeah. a sense it's helped you you know, name as far as your name recognition for producing an album. But at the same time, you're not really getting threat. You're doing a lot of symphonic metal bands that were influenced by Halloween as opposed to thrash bands. And I would love, I think you would do an amazing, a really kick-ass thrash metal band. I think you you do. I would love to, like like Overkill or something, you know, something like that. Yeah, exactly. And that's my point. Bands because Andy Sneap is doing it and he's my friend and I don't think I make it better than him. But but something like uh, like other bands, which I, you know, think like, like more guitar, like, uh, you know, the Rage Band now or something Mm -hmm. in Germany, something like that. Or I don't know, but But there are many, many kind of great bands outside, which are once uh, were produced by Andy Sneap. for instance, and then they have different producers and I didn't like it so much, you know, yeah. I think they lost something and this kind of bands I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, this, well, uh, they could be better somehow. Well, there's younger thrash metal bands in my opinion. There's a ton of them, believe it or not. There's a lot of them over here in the States that I think, yeah. you know, I, I've, I've told people that they should look you up and the thing yeah, is, they're like, I, well, and the thing that's great, the thing that's crazy is when I say, you know, over here, I go, yeah, I know this guy Roland that would probably do a kick-ass job mixing your record. They're like, who? They didn't. They don't know who you are, you know. Yeah. And I think that, I think that group of bands and bands like that need to seek you out. That's my opinion. Um, yeah. And, and I, because I really, honestly believe that you would, you would really do a great job mixing a thrash band. I think it would be. I think it would. I, I think that you get stuck in that power metal, th- uh, that that category of being a power metal guy. But mm-hmm. we all know, at least I know, that y- you like thrash metal like I do. The thrash metal is like my first love to begin with. So I'm just hoping one of these days, one of these bands takes my advice and, and actually seeks you out to mix a yeah. record because I think it would be great, in my opinion. Yeah, maybe I should make this, how, how you call it in English, this kind of wheel, real wheel or something to show what you did as a, as a working kind of thing. How you yeah, call it? a promo video. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like a promo. Um, yeah, so I, th- I remember Andy Sneap did it when he was younger, and I got it. I still have it here. So he, the first bands he made. So, <laughs> and if you promote more of these heavy bands, uh, it's it's maybe easier, or you know, mm-hmm. or you put yeah. it, you put it on on the homepage of my Grapple Studio page or something that people can hear it more. So, but I, I was always lazy with that stuff, you know. <laughs> but some somehow I got work, and I'm happy. But maybe I should promote it to get myself in, in a different level or like I want, you know, more, yeah. more controlling, but definitely I like, I like all sorts, sorts of music. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. The last band I did uh, was a magic opera from Italy. Yeah. And so it's a solo album of a keyboard player and uh, he played the mix to, to his band. And they were so impressed that they said, Oh, maybe he can mix us next time you know so the whole band so on the, which is a bit more guitar oriented and i said yeah that, that makes me proud you see um when people are happy and uh, happy with the result that leads to the next kind of job you know it's a, that's a, that's the kind of business we have you know i want to go to a different subject <clears throat> so yeah. you got to meet up with and see uli for the first time in in quite a long time and let's yeah. talk about that a little bit because you hadn't really seen each other in quite a long time and what yeah. was it like after all this time after all these years finally meeting up with him again and hanging out with him when was last time 2007 yeah it would have been 2007 <laughs> yeah it was a long yeah. time first first half of 2007 and uh yeah it was it was weird you know we have contact um, via internet of course yeah but many years in the beginning uh was just once or twice a year like hello how are you blah 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 or 
he sends me video which I should check out and sometimes he's uh, sending me bands he likes and uh, we should cover the song master plan you know and then um, I think two years ago we had the first time we called on the phone and he was really positive like I still we hope friend we are still friends and I said yeah of course and you know it's it's like the memory of the of the past connects us like 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 old brothers you know mm -hmm. you can fight you can have trouble but uh, on the end we we always had the contact and uh, I like to not deep conversations like like we don't want to hurt each other anymore you know we have too much respect yeah but when I when I saw him was like immediately hugging each other and uh, yeah. how are you his daughter was his kids he had with him two two daughters and uh, he went to our sound check in uh, Norway we played in Norway where he lives and he was driving three hours with a friend of him and uh, then he saw the sound check but he couldn't stay longer so we went to our hotel had, had a little bit there before the show. Uh, hanging out and then uh, he stayed with his uh, friend there for dinner and then they went home so he didn't see the show but uh, it was nice to meet him and uh, we're still in contact now after after this day and uh, uh, i sent him also the dvd which i mixed and cut it uh, for the uh, 20 anniversary i told you before <laughs> Um, I wanted that he's seeing his part as a drummer and I, of course, featured him in a good way, you know, the best part. Also, um, the backstage bonus stuff he should see because we had many, many funny moments and I wasn't sure if he likes it, you know. But he is totally fine and happy with everything. And, uh, yeah, but uh, I, tr I always try to put him in a way more connected uh, maybe let's do something again you know maybe writing songs or maybe playing live or something so i offered him to play live together but in the moment doesn't look like it works you know mm -hmm. he's still he's still a little bit uh, uh no i'm not sure you know mm -hmm. it's it's difficult it's so sad because he's such a talented and uh, great drummer and talented um, uh, songwriter yeah i thought that was no, I, I thought it was interesting when you saw that. And, and uh, he looks, obviously, the last time I saw him, he had long hair. I mean, that was a long time ago. So, like, the last oh, time yeah. I personally saw him. So, I stayed in a house in Hamburg with him, if you remember. So, it's it was nice to actually, it was kind of interesting to see him again and you guys hanging out. But now I want to get on to the Master Plan album. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an album that you're coming out with. So, you know, I remember back when the first album came out. I remember I've listened to all of them as they have come out. I'll be honest with you. I thought Nova Minitium was probably the best record you, you have put out. Uh, it just, the, just the production, the songwriting, everything, everything about it. The last actual studio album to me was your best one. So now you're coming out years later with the next one. Um, obviously mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize you doing, you doing a lot of the production for a lot of these other bands usually will delay stuff like that. And now you have a new album. So let's, let's talk about it. it. It's not out. Obviously you're putting the finishing touches on it, but talk about what it sounds like. How, how did the songs come out and, and how do you, uh, how do you compare it to say the last one? It's difficult because um, the last one I just finished and basically I'm not listening to my own albums so much, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, I know many songs from from the from the first albums because we played them live. Because all the people say the first two albums are the best, blah blah blah. You know, always like that. Um, then you try to get one song of each other album, and Novo Minitium, we had just a single, keeps my dream alive, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I should listen again. I know the sound was good, but songwriting wise. I had strange feelings because the songs were written for for Jorn, mm -hmm. and then then uh, I worked a little bit just like two weeks with uh, Rick, and then we recorded it already. So now we have the first album. We record something like like it should be, you know. Yeah, I have I have Rick in mind. Um, yesterday I sent him the first two songs um, for listening and. Uh, 
with vocal ideas of mine and uh, he should uh, you know we're splitting the, the the lyrics writing because i can't write 12 14 songs alone and so i sent him the songs which he should write the lyrics and these two songs he, he he really liked one is a okay it's a ballad uh, he said it sounded like a movie kind of uh you no know, song uh, it's, it's very irish it's very uh, hmm, very big and, and deep somehow hard to explain and the other one is a very typical master plan a little bit tricky rhythmic and uh i think the whole album is definitely not uh not uh going back to the first two albums too much you know because we can't repeat this this was the magic of three songwriters uh like uli kush uh Jorn and me and now we have uh axel the keyboard player and me basically writing 90 percent of we have even some uh friends writings with us now from from slovakia sure. or even czech republic and I said, I keep the door open. And when I have a good song from some friend, why not? You know, I make a typical yeah. master plan sounding anyway, with my arrangement and with my guitar sound and, and playing. And uh, so I think we have two or three songs uh, written by other guys. And uh, I have four. And then uh, I think Axel has four or five, something mm -hmm. like that. And a lot of stuff. So it's, it's uh, some faster, some heavy like colorful like always you know not everything sounds the same i don't like this you know mm -hmm. but, but it's typical master plan arrangements um the vocal parts need to work out a little bit more and the lyrics of course and then we're done so yeah but the music is uh, written we have 14 songs written i said i don't want to use more than 11 or maximum 12 because one bonus track for japan and that's it i don't want to make too many songs which doesn't make sense you know because people nowadays they don't have the attention anymore to listen carefully to albums they want just uh watching you know youtube the video that's it <laughs> you know so and the trend of the record labels now is to release three videos before even the album comes out yeah you know then it's six months so every two months a new song comes out and that's i think the plan so as soon as we are finishing one song it will be uh, like a video coming out maybe text video first and then the, the real right. video with the band but that's what i talk uh, how i talk to to afm that's what they want to do well i i can be honest with you i think part of that now especially really? releasing three videos so far ahead of the release is the fact that a lot of labels are having problems getting merchandise out in time you know i yeah. i remember back let's say three years ago you you did a pre they would do a pre order and you know you had a couple months you pre order it and it's ready now yeah. with the crisis of the and the shortages and everything like that now you people I mean a lot of labels it's like nine months ahead of time yeah and, and you yeah. know because they need yeah. yeah they need time to get the merch printed and that that's where the big problem is I did a video actually on the podcast about mm. the difficulties bands are facing as far as touring. And getting merchandise out a lot of people don't realize just how how difficult it is because the, the demand is far exceeding the capacity to produce the stuff and what's happening now is that you are having a lot of these issues and the cost of everything is going up you know they you they put these videos out now to really promote it and really get enough people to pre-order it so somebody can at least make a little bit of money they don't lose their ass on it and that yeah. in, in a sense it's 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 okay you know i understand the business aspect but that's typically why they're doing that and uh that's why you make those three videos it's like a minimum it's kind of funny i didn't think about that but when i think about it now when i get these emails promote from you know a promotions person typically now they hire somebody to do promotions for for yeah. them now but yeah, yeah. they don't have a promote promotion guy working for them typically anymore so now he, he that's right i'll get the new lyric video this is the lyric video for the next song and when it hits the third song then the album should come out in a couple months so mm. I, I completely get it and it's it's a little bit difficult since 2000 i think 2013 when you put your last record out um so you know that's the business has changed man and i, I think the COVID thing changed a lot of it and yeah. these shortages so it's really difficult and the cost of everything's gone up it's and also also they uh 
you know, about the vinyl releases, you know, they have to wait because the waiting list of this uh, vinyl plants or printing plants. Yeah. It's so long, like six months they need, you know, because the waiting list is so brutal in the moment. And uh, all those releases are delayed and delayed because of the vinyl market, yeah. you know. Yeah. Which yeah, I think that... is pretty strong now because people like vinyl now. They like to collect this colorful extra stuff, you know. I'm not going to lie, man. When, when I saw that these albums were coming out in vinyl, I thought to myself, you know, I, I owe, I definitely have to go out and get some of these because, you know, I, I agree. It, it, that's how it is. I mean, I listen, I have a turntable back here um, and I actually wire it. It's actually wired to into my <clears throat> uh, computer receiver here too, when I'm at desk and, and I'll listen to it. So I get it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's the new thing. And a lot of kids, I mean, my son's 16 and he loves vinyl. You know, that's great. <laughs> who, would have, who would have ever thought? So, yeah. but, but, but that's just, that's just the world we, that's just the world we live in, man. You know, um, and, and you know, I went back and listened to, I listened to a lot of the master plan stuff in quite a while. I, I you know, I get bombarded so much with so much stuff that you just, mm -hmm. you know, these last couple months of the year, because you're not having all these releases, that's when I go back and listen to old stuff. And, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I think that musically, you know, I think when you were in Halloween, I think musically, I didn't, I don't think you really, in my opinion, I could be wrong, but this is just my perspective. So don't take offense to it. But I think, I don't think you truly found yourself musically until you left. Because I remember when the first album came out, the first couple records came out, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, you, the work after that, after, after you were out of that band, I think as far as you are concerned and stuff that you have done was really, and I still remember those conversations. Like, you're like, man, I, I, I like this kind of guitar sound again. I like the way that this is playing. I like the way that this sounds. And you were really getting into interested in production back in those days, you know, 20 some years ago. But I really think the master plan thing really was your really you finding yourself musically and, and really consistently going down that path in, in my opinion because the halloween stuff it was you know sort of all over the place you had stuff that you know you used in rampage back in the day i mean if you go back to chameleon in, in some yeah. of those days and yeah. i think when i think the dark ride was just such was a basically a record that changed everything for everybody and i think when when everybody parted ways i think everybody in a sense it worked out great for everyone, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I really think you would, I think you found yourself as a record producer and found yourself musically with master plan. And I think that I, I think that it, in the end, I know it was kind of not the greatest thing back when it happened. I remember <laughs> distinctly everything that, that happened back then, but I think that now everybody really has benefited from it. And, you know, when I look at it all these years later, and I think, I don't, I don't think you maybe would have found yourself as a record producer you know where you're at now in my opinion I think maybe not no, no maybe not because then um you're always in the band and you have a producer and then you're sitting there uh why it doesn't sound good well what and, i'm uh, saying what i'm saying is that i i think everybody went to the went the direction that they did and they're happy with it and, and you yeah. know and and i think that musically everybody went it went into the path that I, I couldn't imagine you know i couldn't imagine now all these years later when I think about it, I'm like, man, you know, these, these two parties split ways and I couldn't imagine it not happening because I'm so used to how both of these bands sound now. And, yeah. you know, I, I went back, I, I went back and thought about that. I, I think, you know, I think in your case, Hey man, you know, I'm not, I mean, we're all getting older. Do you really want to go out touring? You know, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, you can be at home with your wife and, and you can make some really good records. And I think you really found your role in, in the music industry. I really think oh, that's def definitely, I'd say many times, I'm not really into this touring anymore because when yeah. I had the uh, gig last weekend, this travel, it makes me so sick. <laughs> so see, my, my nose is running, you know? Yeah. Uh, last time I was, uh, in, uh, some months ago, I was in Spain for one festival with Masterplan. I came back, I had Corona. Thank you. Uh, when Corona started three years ago, I came from Brazil, I had Corona as well. I said, every gig I get sick, you know, <laughs> it's like horrible. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm a kind of guy, I like to meet people, I like to talk to them. And, uh, you know, like in Helsinki, maybe I, I met, shaked hands with 200 people. 
and spoke with everybody. That's how yeah. I am. And then, of course, you get sick, you know. But it's it's also this waiting on the airport and all this, mm, you know, you get tired. You know, you, have, you make, like, party a little bit with these people after the show. And you come home and you're tired for two days. So it's like half of a week for one show, you know. And when you're touring, you get uh, really burned out after, after, you know, if you have many shows and not good day offs or just traveling days, you know. As all depends on the luxury. If you have a small band and you have to be in a tour bus with support or with roadies hanging out, it's it's not so much fun anymore, you know. Yeah, it's maybe the age thing. When you're younger, you're more hungry about that. But of course, I still like to play live and stuff. But I enjoy the stuff here at home with the studio and uh, yeah, seeing my dog and my wife. <laughs> I said dog first, but you know, it's like. <laughs> I mean the other way around, but it's like uh, yeah. I see my guitars hanging here. I see history I had with Halloween. It was it was fun. I mean, to be honest, uh, like I said, I found my style and master plan. But it wouldn't be as well without Halloween because I learned a lot, mm -hmm. which I still use this arrangement of uh, twin guitars or this staccato stuff, which makes everything more exciting. I learned, of course, from this band as well and from from Waiki. And his style and uh, other guys like John Sykes, he, he used sim sim similar uh, kind of arrangements, you know, yeah, like Staccato and, and St. Lizzie or even there, you know. So definitely um, that 12 and a half years in that band helped me a lot to develop myself, you know. Sure. And the Dark Ride, Dark Ride was the, the, the how you say, the, the special part of the, the cake, you know. So mm -hmm. what I learned there was just brilliant, you know. The last great album. I'm, I'm really happy that this album was so powerful for me and strong. And mostly, mm -hmm. in the beginning, people were complaining, but now when when I hear all the fans, they say it's their favorite album. You know, well, everybody I... has different opinion. You know, in Finland, I talked to so many people. Some say Pink Bubbles is my favorite. I said what? Then others say yeah, Chameleon is my favorite. And then Dark Ride, and they said that's weird. You know, but mostly they they loved the Dark Ride the most. Well, I can, yeah, and, and like I said, but I, in my opinion, personally, the master plan stuff <clears throat> is really where, in my opinion, musically, you really truly found yourself. The other stuff, I get what you're talking about. You learned a lot of stuff, but I think you really found yourself. And I remember, man, I remember, I remember the whole Roy Z thing, man. That was like that's all we used to talk about back in the day. If you remember, yeah, we would be like, you, it was Roy this, Roy that, man. Roy's working with me on this, and then. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when you, I think that's when you started talking with Andy Sneap back in those days before really, oh, I think right after that, after you were out of the band and you had formed Master yeah, Plan. I met, uh, met uh, Andy Sneap in England. Uh, I think it was a festival with, Hello with Halloween and uh, who else was there? Creator. So Creator was using him as a produ producer already, mixing guy. Yeah. And I just stood next to uh, Miller, and there came this guy with a long hair, and I said, "Are you Andy Sneap?" And he said, "Yes." And then the next thing I asked him, "Are you cheap?" <laughs> 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 because it's rhyming, you know, Andy Sneap, are you cheap? <laughs> and he was laughing, and uh, that's that uh, how it started. So I told right. him I was I was planning a solo project, and uh, I was, so I was still member of Halloween. So I contacted him already to work with us, Uli and me. Uh, to this solo album, which was later master plan. So, and I think there was something June or May, June, or something like that. And three months later, we worked already together. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I just remember those days being inspired by that. And yeah. I, I, I just remember you were really focused on the sound of, of records and more yeah. so than he said, because I remember meeting, I remember the first time we met like three years four years before that it might have been something like that um you know you were a little bit different and then when you started working with roy that's when the change started so yeah. and then now all these years later you're producing records I, I just think that it worked out to the point where i i think you be, were able to become a record producer and i think that you have a very important role in the metal scene these days. And I'm glad yeah. <clears throat> looking back at things, I'm glad it, I'm glad, I'm glad everything happened the way that it did now, you know, yeah. 20 some years later, because everybody, 
everybody it has become a very happy individual, you know, and has it been able to find themselves in, in a sense uh, and, and really go about their careers and, and do what they've wanted to do. And it, it's worked out for everybody, in my opinion. Um, I'm, de I'm definitely satisfied and happy about this as well. So it's like, uh, you know, you can uh, be like, yeah. So when this reunion came, something like I could be part of it and this and that. So I was thinking about some months and then I said, okay, let's go back to what I'm, uh, uh, you know, what I'm supposed to be like a producer, like mm -hmm. a guitar player, master plan. And uh, so I have a lot of work now on many plans and it's getting, getting even bigger and bigger. If you, if you call it like this, you know, yeah. um, now it looks like when I finish the master plan album, um, it's not signed now. It's um, I'm working now with a record deal for Italian band. Uh, I mean, record label. And uh, that means uh, I will have extra work. I will produce um, writing songs for this label mm -hmm. and uh, writing the melodies, everything. So I'm just doing the whole production, mixing and everything with some some singer from brazil or something like that you know so it's it's a it's a challenge for me i said let's go back more to the songwriting because i'm 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 mixing other bands and i'm not, not writing many songs so so the last album no Minitium to now took nearly 10 years to write this couple of songs and it, now it, I have to <clears throat> it did actually yeah. it's interesting when you think about that as as much as crazy as that sound i mean it's gonna be 10 years old i can't believe that that's a long yeah. time ago yeah, it's it's time is really running faster and faster now in that age, and uh, so I thought I really love this kind of songwriting process as well. But if I don't have a reason, you know, or I mean, master plan is a reason, but sure, we always were famous not to release every year an album, you know. So for me, it's 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 better to to make every couple of years a stronger album and then touring with the songs the best songs now we have enough material you know we can choose a lot you know oh yeah yeah but then uh, when i when i got this offer i said okay i talked with this label already two three years now and i said you know let's do it now i'm i'm really into it and i want to write songs i write vocal melodies for this guy and whatever Maybe I sing some parts, like also in the new master plan, I want to sing again. I think I'm a, I'm a better singer now. The last two years I was really rehearsing a lot and I found out what I did wrong on my vocal technique. <laughs> so I hope people can hear it now and will enjoy a bit more. I remember that oh. first solo album when you were singing. Yeah, but that's definitely was not the right. Key, you know? <laughs> well, hey, you know what though? I, I believe it or not, I thought the Kansas cover, which was a B side, actually sounded really good. Yeah, and uh, like I said, um, I can't explain it now what I did wrong though. But it's it's something. It's it's very easy to fix if you know it. It's the same like uh, Roy in the studio told me <clears throat> how to tune this heavy guitars, how to make this. Uh, layered brutal guitar sound what we did in the studio um i still have this uh, dark right production as a reference in my studio which i had the sure. backing tapes you know the back uh, many years and i couldn't open it because the tapes were old and the computer systems changed so drastic uh, two three years later yeah. and i didn't think about it and then i bought new computer the old ones that throw it away or sold them and then I found a guy in England to uh, fix his tapes again. And I paid him, I think, 500 euro just to have this old session in my computer. And it's beautiful to see how we did it and to hear all the all the separated sounds. And what I learned, uh, you know, it was fantastic. And um, how to play more accurate, um, the special guitar tuning, what uh, Roy showed me. So he opens me a lot of doors and the same trick was with the vocals, but I needed a teacher on, um, you know, I can't say the name, it's Ken Templin, this famous singer uh, with his music school. So I saw it always many years on YouTube, ah, come on, this is not really helping. But then I finally contacted him and he, he showed me what I did wrong. And that was eye opener again, you know, or ear opener. <laughs> And I'm so happy now to 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 be as a singer also a bit more stronger or more 
not not powerful like uh, but more secure about the technique you know? yeah abs absolutely well you see i'm always willing to learn there's always something you can learn and get better somehow you know it, it, it's inter it, what's interesting you know so i go back and and i listen to rick sing with master plan i remember the live album actually and i thought he really did a good job on on the older material that he originally like the stuff that Jorn sang on uh, mm -hmm. i thought he did a really good job at that and I i'm interested to hear what this new master plan album sounds like because when you talk about nova Manitium, i think to myself you know i hear rick singing on it it to me it sounds good i, I don't think about was this written for Jorn or not and I'm interested to see what it sounds like now with you having him in mind when writing the tracks. It should be, I, I can't wait to hear it, to be honest. Yeah. The only thing, the only thing we, we changed this time, I said, uh, I want to have a bit more control about the vocal melodies because it was a big part of the first two albums. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I have my certain style, like, like, you know, it's, 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 it came from, Halloween, it came from Rampage. It's a German style, you can say it even whatever, but um, also the influence of Jorn's bluesy parts, whatever. Or, um, you know, Russell Allen was also part of the songwriting on the first album. I still have the demos of three I, songs. I remember, I remember Russell Allen. It's kind of funny. I, I, was it? I don't remember when you were talking about doing a project. I don't know. I could have sworn I said, hey, you should try Russell Allen out. I remember yeah. you because I, I remember telling you we, we were talking about that and then you ended up contacting him. God, it was so long ago. That was like 20, so that was like 23, 24 years ago. I mean, it was a long time yeah, ago yeah. now when you think about yeah. it. But I, I remember, man, you should get Russell Allen to sing on the solo album. There were a couple of people. I don't know. I kept throwing names out. I was a kid back then, right? Yeah. So I was kind of like, I still, you know, I'm still in contact with him and, uh, I'm always asking him, can you can you do something with me together, like solo project or whatever? And he says, yeah, but he's busy and booked out for one year now. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's what he told me six months ago. So for this project I'm doing next year for the Italian label. Um, so I would love to, but it, it seems like he's always too busy or something, you know. Yeah. I'm well, glad I worked, worked a little bit on this uh, uh, what's, a, what's a band name where I played guitar for him you know level 10 I guess what's the name level, level 10. 10 the one yeah. The, yeah that project lasted one album yeah it's it's like uh, I would love to have more my style there I played like um, like the songwriters did it you know so basically it's my sound but not my playing 100% and uh so definitely I would love to make something, you know, on my own with him, something separate, but who knows, you know? Yeah. Russell's a, Russell is an amazing, amazing vocalist. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, he's my top two or three. Singer, yeah. He know? is definitely, I would probably rank him in my top 10 singers. It's really hard, but top 10 singers, Russell Allen, no matter what that guy does, it, it, it's, it's like, I go and listen to him with Symphony X. I go listen to him with Adrenaline Mob. And then you hear him with, with Arion. And it's like, yeah. and this guy is like ridiculous as far as his vocal ability goes. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. it's unbelievable. I had him on my show once years ago and it was probably one of the best interviews I've ever done, but the guy's always doing something. Yeah. So, yeah. It, but he was really, really a, a very down to earth person too. When, when I, when I spoke to him, the few, the few times I've had him on the show on the radio show. So uh, definitely he's in my top 10 right now, as far as my favorite vocalist. And I remember when I had the demos with me uh, in, in Roy Z's place in uh, Los Angeles, he just came there for one day flying in from New York. And uh, I said, can you sing on these demos and try something you know and he was just uh listening once and then he tried one version that's it yeah next, song. Yeah. next that's, song. that's crazy so here's what's, it, what's insane is if if you watch him have you ever seen him live like with any bands have you ever like watched him at a festival or because because mm. i've seen him live and i am not joking this dude did not miss a note of anything no no i, I saw him i saw him with uh yeah adrenaline mob here in bratislava and with symphony x in berlin long time ago no he was perfect yeah uh, any last words for anybody you know it's a great conversation man it's always 
it's about every three or four years you do come on the show and uh it's always yeah. a fun conversation you know being all being knowing each other for as long as we probably have now um it's it's always fun to sit down and have a conversation and and talk about a lot of the stuff that you have going on yeah it's cool i mean we know us so long fucking hell you you, you came to my house in, in hamburg yeah i remember when was it when was it 98 or it was no it was october of 2000 2000 okay yeah it was me Adi and Michael Guthauser. Mm -hmm. I remember it. We, re we recorded the dog ride already, right? It was already recorded. The release yeah. party. The release party was happening. That's, oh. So that would have been, yeah, that would have been October of 2000. We went to the dungeon in mm -hmm. Hamburg, had the big party. You see, yeah. in the summer, we, we finished the album and in October was out. So that's the time when they needed just three months to release an album well right? that was and in fact that was a month before the famous the famous prank call i don't know if you remember that maybe you remember that um no so i i think i think it would have been it might have been about a month before that i remember getting you and marcus to do a radio interview and mm -hmm. marcus was on the phone and Tobias Samet called in pretending to be somebody else and was like completely fucking with him on the air. It was pretty funny. I still have the <laughs> prank call. And, oh, okay. I don't remember that. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's quite humorous. I'll have to actually, uh, it's quite funny actually, but I, I remember mm -hmm. that was about a month before. So then, then that's when I came over there. So yeah, it would have been 2000, you know, so we were, we were there. I, I remember yeah, so that that's how long that's how long it's been. Ninety eight, I think, was the 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 U.S. show in this mm -hmm. that, that club that they totally filled beyond capacity. It's probably illegal. the The club isn't around anymore, but they had like people all the way around the block trying to get in there, and you couldn't even move. There were too many people in the place. I think they probably broke some laws back then when filling yeah, that venue I, up. I remember but, that place. Yeah, it was that, not one of my best shows. <laughs> no, no, that's when all the gear. If you remember, that's when all the gear got got held up in south america remember that they they, they yeah. the customs held everything back you guys had to rent everything everything was rented by each gig um you know so yeah. i don't know what i got some some guitar and uh, not with the same right pickups not the same <laughs> right pedal that's crazy the, man. That, was, that was not the top of the ice cake you know that's um uh, <clears throat> my roadie was a really famous he's a replacement just for that tour and I think he was uh, working with really famous people like Paul McCartney and Paul Sting. Or <laughs> and he fucked up everything. He was not a metal. Uh, you know? that's, so, pretty, that's pretty funny. So he was walking in a nice suit after the show. <laughs> like not, not working more than he needed. My so, God. Well paid. And I said, I don't want this guy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but the, and that's what I remember, all this stuff. But the people were nice, the fans. They were happy that they saw us. Well, hey, man, it, you know, I, again, it was great to have you on. And um, I'm yeah. really I'm really excited to hear what the record sounds like. I mean, that's going to be the next thing. And, you know, we yeah. can always talk about that down the road and uh, when you come back on. So thanks for coming on, man. Okay, cool, man. 